I would now like you to experience Black feminism, which of course is a tricky thing to do uh, virtually, not least, but also through speech. Um, but I'm going to try to to give you a, a kind of an experience of Black feminism. So imagine that you went on holiday and you travel to a destination, uh, wherever that might be, and you're staying in a hotel that has one of the most spectacular views that you've ever seen. Uh, you can see this incredible lush rain, mountain range right in front of your balcony. Um, you know, it's, it's fertile and blooming and just green and effervescent. And it looks like a kind of paradise. Uh, and, and you really enjoy this holiday. Um, and then you get back to wherever you, you reside. And uh, a friend of yours, you're with a group of friends, and there's another friend who also traveled to this destination. And you start talking about it, and you're recommending it to people. But this, this friend says, oh, don't go there. It's, uh, it's, it's terrible. Um, it's completely ruined. It's very dirty. Tea. there's no greenery um none of what you experienced basically is part of their experience and that can be fine you know people have different experiences nothing wrong with that um but let's say that everybody chooses to believe your friend and not only do they do that but not or not only the people in this group believe her, but your friend also speaks about this, this destination in a way that attracts the attention of the media. So your friend is suddenly on uh, the BBC and CNN and Al Jazeera, and she's being invited to do TED Talks and write books that become bestsellers about this experience that she had during her holiday. Um, and Imagine the frustration that you might feel, or the, aside from the frustration, you might feel, I mean, angry, frustrated, all of that, but also maybe a bit confused and disoriented. Uh, your truth and your experience might feel erased and made invisible. Uh, and you may be trying to like really voice that, no, this is, there's this other experience too. Um, but all of the, of the, the money and the attention and the glamour and the, the gravitas is only directed at your friend. So you probably get where I'm going with this. Um, but this is, or maybe not, I uh, shouldn't assume. Uh, so where I am going with this is to say that this is the experience of being a black woman, uh, or this is very similar, um, but far less serious, of course, because we're just talking about a, a hypothetical location. Um, but the way in which this is the experience of black womanhood shows up particularly in these two questions that I've put here in the presentation. Who is Black and who is a woman? So for decades, for centuries, if, you know, even, um, the response to this question is to who is Black, for instance, is, is, is a response that speaks to the black male experience to, to a notable degree. And the same is true about the question, who is a woman, insofar that the response to that question speaks to the white female experience of womanhood. And there are so many facets and elements of being black and of being a woman that you have when you are a black woman that are very rarely spoken of in our social civic discourse and institutions. 
And so there's this sense of, of dissonance. Um, but it is from, from that, that experience, that lived experience, um, that Black feminist thought emerges. And the, the very sort of core of Black feminism is to say that there are a multitude of experiences, a multitude of ways uh, of being Black or being a woman, clearly, because we, we see that our experiences are not reflected. Um, and this question of who is a woman uh, is, is a really powerful and important and significant question. Um, in fact, I think it is the question, it is the sort of defining question of feminism, which is why I, 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 I want to center on that for a second. Um, if we can answer the question, who is a woman, then we no longer will need feminism. Feminism is in some sense always a response to that. Uh, which we can see if we look back at these four waves that I, I spoke about, um, or if we think about uh, Simone de Beauvoir's famous line, uh, which some of you may be familiar with, uh, in the second sex, she wrote, one is not born, but rather one becomes a woman. And still today, you know, there are tens of thousands of papers, of panels, of of discussions of all kinds that go are still trying to figure out or still trying to really uh, you know get to grips with what Simone de Beauvoir uh, both what she said but also just what she conveyed you know others have also said similar things um, and so given the centrality of this question of womanhood and of and of blackness when it comes to to black liberation, uh, it, is, it is part of answering those questions is understanding and experiencing uh, as, as viscerally as it is possible when one is not a black woman, uh, what it would be like to be a black woman and to, and to be sort of having to absorb the, the knowledge production that is dominant and that is conventional in our societies.